Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing desmosomes. Okay, right, so we've now seen the basic structure of a desmosome. We have seen that desmosomes consist of these clusters of paired desmosomal cadherins, where you have one desmosomal cadherin on the first cell and the second uh, desmosomal cadherin on the second cell. Okay, then the cytoplasmic tails of these desmosomal cadherins on the two cells are linked to the cytoskeleton of the two cells uh, via these collections of proteins here. Okay, right, so we now want to have a more in-depth study of these proteins. We want to discuss placoglobin proteins. We also want to discuss the desmoplakin proteins, and something that I didn't mention in the previous video, uh, but which will become important now, is that there are actually two different types of desmoplakin, desmoplakin 1 and desmoplakin 2. Okay, then there is also uh, multiple types of placophyllin proteins, uh, placophyllin 1, placophyllin 2, and placophyllin 3. Okay, right. Uh, so we now want to study these proteins in a little bit more detail, and we'll start with placoglobin PG. Okay, right. So then, placoglobin. First thing I want to mention is that placoglobin also has another name. Okay, and I'm not just talking about the abbreviation of it to PG. Its other name is gamma catenin. Okay, so if you ever talk, hear someone talking about uh, gamma catenin, uh, that's what they're referring to. They're referring to placoglobin, this protein which binds to the cytoplasmic tails of desmosomal cadherins. Okay, now it's in the family of armadillo proteins. Okay, now what does that actually mean? Well, it means that you contain a special domain known as the armadillo or arm repeat domain. Okay, right. Now, just like in the case of the cadherins, where you had to have at least one extracellular cadherin domain in you to classify as a cadherin, in the case of the armadillo family proteins, you have to have one armadillo family domain uh, in you in order to ca classify as an armadillo family protein. Okay, and the armadillo repeat domain is approximately 42 amino acids long. Okay, right, so let's now have a look at the structure of a placoglobin protein. Okay, so it is a single polypeptide, so here is its amino terminus. Then the first domain that you have after the amino terminus is known as the head of the placoglobin protein. The head of the uh, placoglobin protein is then followed by 12 armadillo repeats. Okay, so let me draw these all as this great section. So, I need six of them in each of these halves. Okay, so there's my first six. Okay, here are my second six. Okay, so that is my 12 armadillo repeat domains there. Okay, so you repeat this 12 times and you make up this uh, central armadillo region of placoglobin here. Okay, right. Uh, so this portion here, where you have the armadillo repeat domain repeated 12 times, this is known as the central armadillo domain of the placoglobin protein. Okay, right. So... Uh, after the central armadillo repeat domain, uh, you then have uh, what's known as the tail of the placoglobin protein. Okay, and then you finally end with the C terminus. Okay, so here is the carboxylic acid tail. Right, so let's color these in. So we'll have the head here in blue. Okay, and then we'll have uh, the tail in red right at the end there. Okay, so. This is the basic structure of placoglobin protein. So, how then does the um, uh, placoglobin protein bind to the C-terminal uh, tail of our desmosomal cadherin? So let's draw this picture again. So here we have our cell membrane here. Okay. Then we have our C-terminal tail of our uh, desmosomal cadherin here. And basically what's going to happen is it is mainly the head of the placoglobin protein, which is going to be involved in binding uh, to the uh, C-terminal tail of our desmosomal cadherin. 
Okay, so here are our 12 armadillo repeats, and then we've got the tail here as well. Okay, with our C terminal here. So let's colour those portions in their respective colours. So we'll have our head region here in blue. We'll have our central armadillo domain consisting of these 12 armadillo repeats here in orange. And we'll then have our tail domain here in red. Okay, right, so that's our placoglobin protein. Okay, now let's have a more in-detailed structure, um, sorry, an in-detailed study of uh, the desmoplakin protein. Okay, now the desmoplakin protein is actually going to bind to the central armadillo domain of our placoglobin protein. So remember, this is placoglobin. Okay, right, so the first thing to say about desmoplakin, okay, is that it is actually one gene. Okay. However, you get the two different forms of desmoplakin, desmoplakin 1 and desmoplakin 2, from two different splice variants of this gene. Okay, right. Now let's have a look at the structure then of desmoplakin. Okay, so once again, it's an individual polypeptide. So here's the amino group. Okay, then the first region is once again known as the head region. Okay, so this is the head region, and I'll colour the head region in, in turquoise here. Then, following the head region, you have a region known as the rod. Okay, so I'll put this here. Okay, and this once again consists of a coiled coil domain, but we're not going to go into its structure too much in uh, the case of desmoplakin. Okay, so here is the rod domain of our uh, desmoplakin protein. Then you have three domains which are known as the plakin repeat domains. Okay, and I should have said actually uh, that desmoplakin actually belongs to a family of proteins known as plakin family proteins. And the characteristic feature that these plakin family proteins have is they have these plakin repeat domains. So desmoplakin has these three plakin repeat domains, which are often abbreviated as PRDs. So this stands for Plakin, that's the P, okay, the R stands for repeat, okay, and then the D is for domain, so these are plakin repeat domains. Okay, and you have the plakin repeat domain A, the plakin repeat domain B, and the plakin repeat domain C, all here in light green. Okay, right, uh, and desmoplakin is within the family of plakins. Okay, then following the free plakin repeat domains, okay, you then have a region known as the GSR. Okay, now what does this stand for? Well, this stands for glycine serine uh, arginine rich region. Okay, and this region is actually quite important because this is where you are actually going to bind to the intermediate filament with. Okay. So, GSR here stands for, the G is for glycine, okay, the S is for serine, the R is for arginine, okay, so this is single letter amino acid code, uh, G is the single letter code for glycine, S is the single letter code for serine, and R is the single letter code for arginine. You might think, well, why is A not the single letter code for arginine? A went to alanine, basically. Okay, so... This domain here, the GSR domain, is the glycine serine arginine rich domain. So it contains a lot of these free amino acids. Okay, so let me just remind you of the structure of these free amino acids. So we'll start with glycine. Okay, so I'll draw the core amino acid structure firstly. So here's the amino group. Here's the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it. And here's the carboxylic acid group. So that's the core amino acid structure we have here now. Okay, and the R group of a glycine residue is then just a hydrogen coming off there. Okay, so I've drawn it as a residue, which means I've drawn it as though it's bound within a polypeptide. Okay, then let's put um, serine next. So here's the amino group. Here's the alpha carbon. Here's the carboxylic acid group, so that's the core amino acid structure. And then the R group then consists of a methylene group, like so, with an alcohol group coming off it. Okay, so this is serine. This is glycine here. Okay, and I think I'll colour code them up. So glycine will have in blue here, 
serine will have in red. And then let's finally do arginine. Arginine, unfortunately, is the most complicated one. Okay, so uh, once again, the core amino acid structure. Here's the amino group. Here's the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it. Here's the carboxylic acid group. And the R group now consists of, uh, firstly, three methylene groups. Now, because I haven't really got actually room to draw three methylene groups, what I'm going to do is draw one methylene group, put brackets around it like so, then subscript it three, which means repeat this thing three times. It's a useful trick. Um, and then that means three methylene groups there. Then after the third methylene group, I want an amino group. So here's a nitrogen with a hydrogen coming off it, followed by a carbon which has a proper amino group here, or a primary amino group here, okay? And then it also has a double bond to a nitrogen atom, which then has a hydrogen coming off. So this, then, is the structure of arginine. Okay, so this, whoops, not like that. Uh, so this uh, GSR region uh, is rich in glycine residues, it's rich in serine residues, and it's rich in arginine residues. Okay, and it's this region which is going to be involved in binding to the intermediate filaments. Okay, so, uh, firstly, let's talk about uh, how it's going to bind to placoglobin. So, basically, the head of desmoplakin is going to bind to the central uh, armadillo domain here of the placoglobin. Okay, so here is our head here, binding uh, to the central armadillo domain of placoglobin. And unfortunately, I haven't actually left enough space here to draw the full thing in. So what I'm now going to do is just omit these three sections here, or I'll shorten them down. In fact, I could sort of try and squeeze them in. Okay, so I'm going to shorten the rod domain down hugely into just this purple portion here. Okay, then I'm going to shorten those three um, plaque in repeat domains, the plaque in repeat domain A, B, and C down into this. Okay, and then I will have uh, my glycine, serine, arginine rich domain here, and then my C terminal here. Okay, right, and that glycine, serine, arginine rich domain there is now going to bind the intermediate filament. So this represents my intermediate filament, or my IF. Okay, right. So the final protein then to discuss is placophilin. Okay, right. So firstly, there are three different genes for placophilin proteins. Okay, there is placophilin 1, placophilin 2, and placophilin 3. In addition, you can abbreviate placophilin often to PKP. So if you see PKP, that means placophilin. Now, the placophilin 1 and the placophilin 2 genes, they both have two splice variants. So there is placophilin 1A and placophilin 1B. There is also placophilin 2A and placophilin 2B. Okay. Right, so that means that overall there are actually five different placophilin proteins. Okay, now, once again, the placophilins are armadillo family proteins. They're going to contain armadillo domains. In this case, uh, they're not quite going to have 12 like the placoglobin proteins, but they're going to have nine of the things. So let me now draw you the structure of a placophilin protein. Okay, so firstly, here's the amino terminus. Then the first domain they have is what's known as their head. Okay, they then have five of these armadillo repeat domains here, all in tandem. Okay, they then have a gap, and then they have four more in tandem uh, armadillo repeat domains. Okay, they then have their tail portion here and then their C terminus here. So all five of the different uh, placophilin proteins all have these basic domains. Okay, right. So here is the head of our placophilin protein in turquoise. Here is the tail of our placophilin protein in blue. And now we'll color in those nine armadillo repeat domains in orange here. Okay, right. Uh, so 
all of them, no matter which splice down we're talking about, they all have this structure, okay? They do vary slightly. The two splice variants do vary slightly, okay? So in the case of placophyllin, the A splice variant is the shorter version, and the B splice variant is the longer version, which is just annoying after we've talked about the Desmocollins, which are the other way around, okay? So the a ones do have slightly shorter polypeptides than the B splice variant, but they don't emit any of these domains, basically. Okay, these domains are conserved in all of them. Okay, so which portion then binds to uh, the, um, the Desma plaquin protein here? Well, it's the head portion of the placophyllin, which binds to the head portion of uh, the Desma plaquin protein, like so. Okay, so here is the head portion of our placophyllin binding onto the head portion of our desmoplaquin protein. And you'll then have your five armadillo repeat domains, followed by your four armadillo repeat domains, followed by your tail, followed by your C-terminus here. Okay, so let's put these portions in. There's our first five armadillo repeat domains, followed by our four armadillo repeat domains, followed by our tail in blue. And then, of course, the head domain here on our placophyllin protein uh, will then bind to the head of another um, desmoplaquin protein other than this one, and that's how it's involved in linking multiple of these uh, desmosomal cadring complexes together to form a large desmosome. Okay, and that now concludes our discussion of desmosomes.